Talk Radio. This is Coach Big C, and you're listening to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch on WKL 1450. Welcome back to the Mohawk Valley Sports Watch. Thanks for making us part of your Sunday mornings here on WKAL Talk Radio 1450. Alongside the stat man, Eric Coleman, and here with me today, we're going to go to the phone lines and talk to Coach Brown. Let's go to him now. Hey, Coach. Happy holidays, my friend. Happy holidays. How we doing? Do we lose your Coach? No, I'm here. Oh, How perfect. You? How are you this morning? I'm doing well. Happy New Year. Same to you. Good to have you on. It's been a little bit of a while, Coach, but uh, we've been following you. And uh, I know your family, you've got some North Carolina and Duke fans, right? Oh, uh, I, I live in a house of <laughs> North, North Carolina fans. It's fun to follow you, Coach, on Twitter. It's awesome to see. But, Coach, let's get right to it here. So you have some big shoes to fill. I had to do some history because... Um, we have the uh, the Syracuse Stallions are close to me here in Rome, uh, so we follow them quite a bit. And now, we'll, obviously, we're going to have to follow you guys. But I had to do some digging, and I, I did not know that Phil Jackson and George Carl uh, were coaches back in the early 80s for the Patroons. Yes, uh, big, big shoes to fill, like you said. Phil Jackson was the head coach. You had George Carl. You had Bill Musselman, who went on to coach in the NBA. And then... Current um, Indiana Pacers coach Rick Carlisle played for the Patroons. Former Washington Wizards head coach uh, Scotty Brooks played for the Patroons. So uh, a lot of coaches and players uh, went from the Patroons to the NBA. But back then, the CBA, as you know, was the feeder system to the NBA. There was no G League. That was the G League. So a uh, little bit different dynamic now, but there's a lot of history and tradition with the Albany Patroons. Coach, what are some of the big changes for you going from, you know, coaching college, a long, long tenure in college to uh, making the jump to the Patroons? What are some of the big differences? Well, the first uh, difference really is it's a different game. Uh, it's an NBA rules, so you're playing 48 minutes. Uh, you have illegal defense. You're coaching grown men. Uh, you're not coaching kids that are transitioning to young adults. So uh, the guys that I'll be coaching all have that dream of playing in the NBA. Not that the college kids don't, but these guys have already started their um, venture towards, I, I guess, the NBA. Uh, The guys that we've signed so far have all played professionally, whether it's the G League, Europe, Latin America, Asia. So I'll be coaching experienced pros. And let's face it, it, it's different. There's going to be a time where a player gets frustrated with me or the coaching staff and the way they handle that and the words that they choose uh, will probably yep. be a lot different than a college kid, that's for sure. Coach, how about the game itself? Because a lot of people you know, say, well, football is football and basketball is basketball. You're still playing on you know, 10-foot hoops. But as far as coaching for you, and you just talked about a few of the, few of the difference, does your coaching style have to change how it's been for the last, what, 20, 30 years of coaching college? I, I think it has to. Uh, you always, as a coach, have to adapt and adjust, but it, it's a different game, especially with how you play defense. Uh, the TBL, uh, the league that we play in, it's a very offensive-minded league, and that's not you know, a bad thing. But when you look at some of the scores and you see teams scoring 130 points uh, you know, every night, you know, for me, as I told my staff, if we can just play a little bit of defense, if we can hold teams into the 90s, uh, you know, we'll win an awful lot of games. But for me in particular, the, how we defend is going to be the biggest adjustment because you can't sit somebody in the lane. You can't really load to the basketball because the rule is you have to be within an arm's length of the guy that you're guarding. Uh, you can play zone in the league, but you can't play true zone. I, I'm not a zone guy, but if you have a 7'2", 275-pound center,
presenter yep. who maybe doesn't move very well, well, you can't just turn around and say, we'll play 2-3 zone and we'll just stick him in front of the rim. He has to be within an arm's length of somebody at all times. So uh puts an awful lot of pressure on the individual guarding the basketball because if you get beat quickly, uh, it's tougher to rotate and rotate effectively. So... Uh, and then you have another eight minutes in the game. A lot can happen in eight minutes. Uh, so uh, it's it's good in a way if you have a 12-man roster. What I have to figure out is if you watch the NBA, they always talk about that second unit. Yep. You know, how did our second unit match up tonight? Who's going to be uh, on our second unit? And then, hey, this guy would be a great scorer on the second unit. So in college, there really wasn't – such a thing as a second unit. I think you were lucky if you had a good starting five and, you know, I would play seven or eight guys. So now thinking about possibly playing ten guys, all right, how are we going to do that? How am I going to deal with that type of rotation? And to be honest, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, hey, we're going to have our second unit like the NBA, but, you know, you're not going to be able to play guys 40 minutes a night and expect them to be efficient and effective, especially if you're playing back-to-back nights. Even the NBA has gone away from back-to-back. There's usually a day off in between. Now, they might play four days a week, but it's going to be a Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday type setup where years ago it used to be, hey, we're playing on Saturday and we're going to play on Sunday. Maybe you have a day off, then you play Monday, Tuesday. Uh, you know, they don't do that in the NBA anymore. But in our league, we're going to be playing either Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, or in a perfect world, you know, we'll play Friday, Sunday. So you have the day off right. in between for rest, recovery, and preparation purposes. Coach, what made the job so attractive uh, for you when it, when it came open? Um, and you still have that desire to someday get back to the college game? Wow. Uh, good questions. Um, I, I received a text message uh, one morning from the vice president of the Albany Patroons, uh, Rocco Rashuti, and all it said was, hey, coach, are you in the area still? If so, can we talk? So I just texted him back, and I said, yeah, I am in the area right now. Call me anytime. And he called me, and I had no idea they were looking for a coach Um, so he mentioned it to me and I said to him probably not interested Uh, then he followed it up with can you help us find a coach Uh, and of course I said hey if if I'm not interested in doing it I will help you guys however I can so I agreed to meet with uh, Rocco and Mike Korch the president of the Patroons and You know, what I thought was going to be a half-hour meeting turned into about three or four hours. And, you know, I I walked out of there at least intrigued. Um, So I, I, I sent them a note thanking them, and then I told them, you know, for me to consider this uh, seriously, I would need A, B, and C. And their response to me was done, done, done. Um, you know, and then I just I talked to my wife. And the unique thing about the Patroons and this league is training camp doesn't start until February 20th. The season is March through May plus playoffs. I have a son who's a freshman playing at, at SUNY Fredonia. Uh, this job would give me the opportunity to see just about every one of his games. Um, you know, that was that's, that's the thing about college basketball. If he was playing at Fredonia and I was coaching I'd never have the opportunity to see him play live. So as my wife mentioned to me, this could be a blessing in disguise. Um, And then the other thing was uh, I have full control of basketball operations. Uh, I have the general manager title. Uh, I manage the salary cap. I'm the one dealing with all the agents. I'm the one that is uh, hiring the players, waiving the players. So that was something that was going to be that was very important to me too. 
Um, am I going to have full control of basketball operations? And then I looked at it as a challenge. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, it's a different game. Uh, it's a pro game. The rules are different. Uh, another opportunity for me to grow and develop. I don't have to uproot my family. Um, so I was very intrigued. Uh, my meetings and my discussions with the Patroons were, were all positive. Uh, the coaching staff that I was able to put together, I thought uh, I'd be able to be creative and we'd have a local flavor to our coaching staff. I actually hired Brian Beery, the longtime head coach at St. Rose. He was there for 35 years, a very successful Division II program. Gave me my, my first start in college coaching. Hired Donnie Bassett, who was George Carl's assistant back in the day with the Albany Patroons, one, arguably one of the best uh, high school coaches in Section 2 in this entire area. Uh, then I hired uh, Julie McBride, who was one of the best, if not the best, uh, female basketball player in Section 2 history. She went on from Catholic Central High School to, to Syracuse, graduated from Syracuse as the all-time leading scorer at Syracuse, and then played professionally for 18 years. Well, she has a very successful basketball training business in the area. And then I hired Mark Ritzik, who had 20-plus years of college coaching experience, but is the husband of former Siena women's basketball head coach, Allie Jack. Yes, I so saw been that. In this, been in this area for a while. Um, so really excited about the staff. And what we're trying to do is make it the community team and the community has really embraced what we're doing in a short period of time. I think it helps that, you know, I was the head coach at Albany for the past 20 years, so I have those relationships. And uh, so I really thought that the community would embrace this team. I'd have a local flavor on our coaching staff, control of basketball operations, and the fact that I thought we can win and win big. Well, Coach, I know the college game is stressful enough, but it sounds like you've got an awfully lot on your plate to go from one stressful situation to, to the next year with the Patroons. But how tough was it um, to assemble the roster? Yeah, you know what, that, uh, you know, I'm smiling when I said this. Uh, I knew it would be a lot of work, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm handling things differently than I think probably the other 42 general managers uh, in the TBL are doing. What they're doing as I'm learning is they're holding a lot of tryouts and, you know, we held one tryout, but the relationships that I developed uh, in the college game with other coaches, I'm using that to my advantage. And then the other thing that I'm probably uh, doing more than most is I'm dealing directly on a daily basis with agents. So I've been in contact probably with over a hundred agents. Um, and it's been that, that dynamic has been very, very interesting because let's face it, the more money the player makes, the more money the agent makes. Uh, I've had to use the history and tradition of the Patroons, regardless of, you know, uh, if it was back in the CBA days use that to our advantage. We have our own facility. We play in the Washington Armory, yep. which the Patroons own and seats about 3,000. Uh, so we have a really good setup. But the agents, uh, you know, they're trying to get their guys the most money. They're trying to get them to the NBA or the highest levels in Europe. And what I'm trying to get them to understand is, you know, hey, uh, if you're good enough, they'll find you. Um, and we're we're in the state capital. We'll have a great fan base. We have our own facility. Have a really good situation. And my my goal with this is not it's not about Coach Brown. It's about the players and getting them maximum exposure and getting them bigger and better jobs uh, overseas, whether it's Europe, Asia, Latin America. Getting them into um, G League training camps or potentially NBA summer leagues and you know we're already using the G League to our advantage as I mentioned one of my assistants Don Bassett uh, you know was George Carl's assistant uh, back in the day and on that staff the other assistant 
was Terry Stotts, who was the longtime head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. Yep. And George Carl's son is now the head coach of the Delaware Blue Coats in the G League. So Donnie Bassett picked up the phone, called George Carl, called Kobe Carl, and Kobe already sent us a player. We're working on a second one right now. So uh, we're using all the contacts that we can, but you know we've got uh, we've got a guy that scored 1,300 points in the ACC, 1,600 points in the SEC, 1,500 points in the Big Ten. All of our guys have played in either the G League, Europe. Uh, Latin America or Asia, as I've mentioned. So um, what we're doing is we're, we're treating this like, hey, we're a high-level European organization that's playing in Albany, New York. So uh, the Patroons organization has given me the freedom to do what we need to do to be very successful. They understand how difficult it's going to be now with 42 other teams uh, in the league, but the one thing that I have not been consumed with is how other teams in the TBL are operating. I've been consumed with uh, the Albany Patroons and with what we're doing, and hopefully, well, hopefully not, but you know, I think other organizations are going to look at what we're doing, how we're operating, and you know, I think we're going to set the tone and the standard. Well, Coach, we'll get a chance to hopefully come see you guys play when you come play Syracuse. We'll definitely uh, come to the game and be cheering you on. You, you know you got some Patroon fans here now uh, on Sunday mornings here with, with the crew moving the, the Sundays. But, Coach, we'll do it again soon. Hopefully we can get you on. We'll talk some college basketball, too, during the year. Yeah, no, I'd love to talk college hoops with you guys. And anytime you want to come to a game, if you're in the Albany area, give me a buzz and I'll I'll leave you some tickets, and if you come to Syracuse, you can sit on our bench and tell me everything that I'm doing wrong. I'll let you, <laughs> I'll let you call the first couple of plays. Well, Coach, we love you. It's good to have you back on again. We missed you. Hey, missed you guys. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me on, and hopefully we talk soon. You got it, Coach. Thank you. You got it. All the best. He um, He's fun. He's yeah. always uh, yeah. He's always taking the time and to come on and – I, I, it was a great radio. Oh, he always does. And, and, and you really, though, you think about it, and I follow him on Twitter, and I didn't want to really – I could have spent a whole hour, <laughs> you know, talking with him. But, um, you know, he did make a comment in one of the news articles in Albany that he was contacted for some college jobs. Mm. Um, and, he, and he passed up whatever jobs that were available that came calling for him, and, you know, he gets an opportunity. But it kind of hits home because he says he wants to follow his son play. Yeah.